My name is Jack Vale, if you're listening to this, and this is... Madison. And Madison's my daughter. She is 20. Yes, sir. You're going to be 21 this year. 21. It's a big deal. It is. And I am older than Madison. <laughs> and, uh, and that is all he'll say. Yeah, that's that's all I'm going to say. But I, so I am known for hidden camera pranks. I've been doing it for years. I started in uh, around 2008. And for the past 13, 14 years or something, I've been doing it pretty much nonstop. Um, and did I just... You- Sorry. Huh, go, no, go ahead. Did you huh. mention that uh, you're my dad? Uh, I did. I said. Oh, okay. <laughs> did I not? Did I, remember? I don't know. Did I not? Oh, well, maybe I'm, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, but I'm. I'm Madison's. Uh, I'm Madison's dad. Very important piece of the the information here. So, I, I'm really um, excited to do this because I wanted to do something different, and I like to talk. Yes. And I like to listen. So the thing that that I think. I can't wait to hear about more than anything is the different perspectives. Like there's so much to talk about. And I know that you grew up in a different time than I grew up in. So Mm -hmm. we're going to find all kinds of stuff to talk about that. We might have a little bit of like a different perspective. on. Yeah, totally. And I think that's okay. Um, so the, the best part of this is that we get to do this show from a really iconic, uh, building. Mm hmm. So without, I don't want to bore anybody and get too in depth of a conversation and, you know, like some of this stuff, but I will tell you in a nutshell, this place is one of the coolest places in Tennessee. Uh, The music history here is unbelievable. Johnny Cash owned this building that we're in. It's just down the street from his farm, not even a half mile from here. And uh, Johnny Cash, right behind you, there is a stage, a little stage that Johnny Cash would perform on and his friends, like music icons, yeah. like Carl Perkins, some of the greatest would be up there on that stage performing. And then Johnny would like close the place down and have it like, you know, friends, family would come and they'd celebrate and stuff like that. Super cool. But before Johnny Cash owned this place, it was owned by another guy named Red Wortham. And Red, you didn't know that? Mm-mm. Okay. It was a recording studio. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So Red Wortham was the guy who would record music and stuff. And he, it's a long story. We'll get into it some other time. But basically he's responsible for um, the Prison Airs, which was a black group back in like the 40s, 50s. And um, so anyway, this place became known as kind of a place where black musicians back in the day would come and they would record and they could they wouldn't have to worry about being discriminated against because mm-hmm. they could just come here and and record by um, by red and it yeah. got known for that well so he cut albums and did all of this stuff in fact the owner of this place actually um, found like got a hold of a bunch of the actual real to real recordings that they recorded here and stuff and he owns cool. all this stuff yeah That's really we cool. should play some of that sometime so so red Wortham uh, then Johnny Cash now when Red owned the place, there was like, um, there's all this music being recorded here, and Elvis was inspired um, musically by the Prison Airs. So Elvis would listen mm-hmm. to the Prison Airs. Well, that was that was here. So he was listening to all this music that he loved, and it was all coming out of here. So um, you know, arguably, some people say that you know, this this building right here had something to do with Elvis's Career? success. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Very. Um, the other thing is that um, Brian, the guy who owns this place, actually tore down... We're saying all this, by the way, because the Elvis movie came out. Yes. Brian tore down Colonel Tom Parker's original house in Madison, Tennessee. Not tore it down. I should rephrase that. He <laughs> dismantled it carefully. Okay. So we hired a crew in to dismantle this house because they were going to turn it into a car wash, which oh. they, they did. But they gave Brian a chance to go there and carefully Get take it stuff. apart. Yeah. So they discovered like the bathroom that Elvis Presley used when he stayed at the colonel's house. <laughs> they discovered Elvis's original fan club where mail would come and all oh, this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to mention there's a famous picture of the colonel and Elvis 
together in front of a wall in the colonel's house and that's where their music management deal began yes so they had press come in taking snapping pictures and stuff so that wall is here in this building and you it's cool to look at the picture and then match it up with the actual wall because yeah. it's like the pine you know what i mean you can see all mm -hmm. the spots and everything and go oh my gosh elvis was standing and you're standing there at the wall like people come in here and they get pictures of them in front of that famous iconic um wall yeah so i remember a couple of years ago they were talking about this movie coming out and they were filming it and all this kind of stuff and i think they did most of it in australia oh really i didn't mm -hmm. know that yeah that's cool and I remember looking at this wall going, man, I wonder if they're going to talk about this. Is this wall going to be in the oh, movie? Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And it wasn't really. Was but there a scene? Like. Making it official? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't think. I, I don't remember there that there was. But I don't I remember either. I will say this movie was. It, the editing in this movie was so creative. It was very creative. It could have been in there, but we missed it because it was that. That's like true. Like they would cover all this time in just a few minutes. Which was, or seconds, I mean, yeah. which is really, really cool. Um, so that's where we're doing this from. And it's it's a pretty, it's kind of weird to think that so many, like, really important and significant things happened in music history here. Mm -hmm. Like, there's stuff that Elvis actually owned and belonged to him that yeah. are here. When they were tearing down Colonel Parker's house, they found, like, his razor. <laughs> That's a little weird to me. <laughs> like, why did you keep that? <laughs> you don't want one of Elvis's razor blades? Yeah, I can do without it, I think. Wow. Uh, but the Colonel didn't have any kids, right? To, like, give his stuff to. That's why it just went yeah. to Garbage or Brian. Like both. Yeah, I think what happened was, I think Colonel Parker sold his house to somebody. Oh, okay. And then that person um, was bought out by the car wash people or something like that. Oh, gosh, so gosh. Brian cut a deal with the new owner after the colonel died mm -hmm. and said, listen, this is a gigantic part of music history, so we want to we want to do this. So he's been yeah. looking forward to this movie for like two years. In fact, we watched it in the theater with him. Oh, I didn't know that. That's Ten cool. days before it was released, by right. the way. Just saying. Yes. That was a big It's always a big deal because I've been waiting for this for a long time, too. I didn't even know it was a thing until it came out. Or the, like the Elvis movie? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know until recently. Um, we have a mutual friend named Keith Smith. Yes. Who mm -hmm. played horns, I believe, plays trumpet, I believe. Yes, very talented. On the soundtrack, which is really, really cool. And I remember meeting him a couple years, two, three years ago, and they were working on stuff before they even shot the movie. Oh, I think they were doing some okay. of the music yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff, and he right. was, like, talking about, um, you know, this project, and it was all, like, pretty secret. Mm -hmm. But um, so you saw the Elvis movie. Yes. Okay. Did you see it the day it came out? No, I think we waited a little bit because it was so packed, hmm. the theaters. Yeah. So when did you see it? I don't know. It was like... Not long ago. Maybe like a week after it came out. I, I was think. so excited for you to see it. Yeah, so was we, I. It was great. Yeah. Did you... Um, w tell me what you thought of it. I thought it was incredible. Yeah. I thought the beginning of it was like a little much to handle. What do you like, mean by that? The scenes were like clipping so fast and it was like... You were like tripping while watching it. Um, yeah. But I thought it was also really creative. Were you confused? Like I was a little confused because it felt almost like a trailer. Oh. But that was only like for the first half. Like it, it didn't do that the whole movie. Yeah. But yeah. it was cool. I still, I really liked the Austin did great. Favorite scene? Um. One. Just one, though? Just one. One favorite scene. I'll tell you I'll tell you mine. Okay, you go first. No, no, no. Okay, really? fine. Um, it's, I have two, though. Because, That's fine. Okay, That's so fine. I really liked, I think, no, it, I probably have one. My favorite one was when, um, I don't remember what he was performing at, but it was, like, in a field, and he was supposed to be the new Elvis with, like, his, like, suit and tie and... He was yeah. supposed to not move and like do his thing. Yeah. And then he just ended up doing it anyways. Is that when he's saying evil? I think he's. Yeah. What is that song it's called? It's called Trouble. Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's when he's saying evil. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. I thought that scene was great. I yeah. thought it was really cool because you don't expect him to like be as independent because of how like mm -hmm. on him the colonel was mm -hmm. about like 
and how like he influenced Elvis so much, but even then he still decided mm. to do his own thing and be himself. I thought it was cool. Yeah, yeah. So I think both I think both of my favorites. I'm gonna do two. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm do well, two I didn't get to share my. Well, second my one. my two are kind of <laughs> are somewhat close together. Okay. Wait, you want to do your second one first? No, because I can't explain it that well now that uh, I think uh, about uh, it. Okay, so uh, like you never know. My, mine might be the same as yours. Yeah, that's true. What you just said was definitely mine. Okay. Uh, one of them for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the anticipation of, I'm assuming, like we're assuming that people listening to this m- maybe saw the movie and can relate to this. Yeah. But we don't want to give too much. Yeah, we will. Well. Because it's been out. Yeah, it's so, been out. And Okay, so Trouble was awesome. Trouble's always mm-hmm. been one of my favorite tunes. That was great. Okay. But, and the anticipation, by the way, with because that's the one where he did the pinky thing. Yes, that one was said, great. You, if you move anything so much, it's just your little pinky. Then you, you know. Yeah, so yeah. he did this whole thing, and everybody went crazy over right. that. So then, the anticipation of what he's what is he going to do? What's he going to do? And then he starts singing trouble, and mm-hmm. soon as you hear trouble, you know it's going to be like it's going to be yeah yeah, dope. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> You know it's gonna be dope. Yeah, (laughs) Elvis would say he wouldn't have said dope. (laughs) He did some dope probably (laughs) because they all did back then. Yeah, pretty sure. Uh, So, (laughs) you know what? Um, It was the the one before that when he first. I think it was when the Colonel first saw him actually perform. Maybe or the or the the performance right? Yes, in the pink, dude. What? Yeah, that was great. Like. That was unbelievable. The The best part of that for me was I grew up watching the actual scenes from the the crowds mm-hmm. who were going ballistic over watching him yeah. on stage. These girls. Okay, explain to me, could this even happen today? Like, that was insane. Yeah, they that was captured very... captured a moment in time where these girls were just freaking out. I mean, they were like, they were screaming and crying and <laughs> yeah. they, I've seen that in real video clips just like that. Like they didn't even exaggerate it. And I, I would think, I don't really see that today. Like, what is that even, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think that it, it does happen today. I mean, I think that happened with like Justin Bieber, it like did? when he broke, not like that though. That was very specific. And I think that like, that was also something I've never seen. Like there are crazy fans of like mm. people like Justin Bieber's fans when he was like breaking out as a new artist and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But he was also a lot younger. But um, Elvis specifically, that was like brand new. Mm-hmm. Like the way he was moving and the style of music for him and all of that. Like the audience had never seen anything like that before. Right. And so it's definitely different. Mm -hmm. for people now versus then like i could see why because at first i was watching it and i was like this they're doing the most like that's a lot going on i don't know if it was that (laughs) crazy because i could never see myself like acting like that yeah as like a girl in the audience but um it was real so it was like crazy i don't think something that specific and crazy would happen now because everything is oversaturated and done before and that hadn't been done before but if you did behave that way, who would it be? Like for someone now? Yeah. I don't even know because I'm not, I don't really. <laughs> no, I couldn't see you. I could not see you I acting think like I that. Would act like no that matter what, for, for anybody. Anyone, yeah. Yeah. If I don't get like starstruck, did really. You, did you either. get it though? Did it make Did it make sense to you oh, in, yeah, yeah. in that time period? Yes, absolutely. It made sense. For that context? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything, was there anything in the movie that you would like disappointed you? Um, I, no, I was not disappointed. I thought it was great. I mean, I didn't know that Elvis was such like a player and like had like that side of him, but I also never really like learned a lot about him other than his music because mm. he's like incredibly talented, obviously, mm-hmm. and was like an icon, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like some of the scenes where he was like kissing all of his fans, like in front of Priscilla, mom, and like cheating on her. Yeah, mom hated that scene. Mom did. Yeah, <laughs> she, she hated did. that scumbag. 
Look at Elvis up there. But he's also, that's to be expected. Like, he's a rock star. Yeah. And, like, that kind of stuff happens today as well for, like, people like that. Yeah. But, yeah, I didn't know that he was, like, had all these mistresses and stuff like that while yeah. he was married. It is it is it is a bummer. It, I, you know, I've known about that. A lot of people have. But mm-hmm. it, it is Yeah, kind it's of definitely, a, like, common knowledge. I just didn't know about it. It's sad, especially when it's, like, somebody like Priscilla because nobody can really say anything bad about Priscilla. I know. I've never heard anything it's other yeah. than she loved him, she was supportive of him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like she was this great, you know. Right. But, you know, you surround yourself around this environment that just takes over. Yeah. You know? definitely. So you have things available to you all the time and it's got to be tough. Drugs, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. But um gosh, it was such it was such a masterpiece of a movie. Yeah, acting and filming and editing and all of that, none of that disappointed me at all. Yeah. I thought that was all amazing. Yeah, me neither. And Austin Butler was one of those guys that, one of those actors that it's not just a matter of does he look like him? Mm-hmm. It's a matter of him really embodying, being able to embody who Elvis is yeah. and act like him. Mm-hmm. Kind of like... Um, Joaquin Phoenix did because when they I remember when they originally chose Joaquin Phoenix to play Johnny Cash Mm -hmm. in Walk the Line I I was like no there's no come on what what are they thinking and then you see the movie you're like wow he sounded and acted just like him and you sort of forget that he's Joaquin Phoenix yeah right it I felt like that I felt like that too with this Mm -hmm. yeah um okay so there was one thing that I was disappointed by. Oh. One thing. First of all, it was heavy. It was yeah, very, it was. very heavy. That was okay for me because it was a heavy story. Mm-hmm. And I knew some of that stuff anyway. So it, it really was. But the thing that I was disappointed by was, and I grew up in like gospel music and stuff like that. So I knew like Elvis had released these gospel albums mm-hmm. that were incredible. And him listening, him doing a gospel song was phenomenal. It was always the most it was a big big deal it was what do you what do you guys say like it was extra yeah is that, yeah sure is that okay yeah okay. Uh-huh, it was extra okay so uh but it was interesting to me because they they covered so much of his life and 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 music and and recording and all of that stuff but they didn't really get into the gospel mm-hmm. they started out that way yeah they did because when Especially he was a kid in that, that once that was another great scene when he was scene. young and like walked into the church. Yeah. That was great. Oh, they set the stage perfectly because for on one, you know, he's got like initially him and his buddies are like looking through the holes in the thing mm-hmm. and they see this other thing going on. Yeah. And then something just like calls him away, like takes mm-hmm. him away. Right. Yeah. So he goes over and then he's getting influenced by this whole other world. And you're like, oh, OK, well, this makes sense because rock and roll right. and gospel. And, and he's always talked about black gospel. So he loves that. And so I'm like, this sets the stage. And then even later on in the movie, he makes the comment when he's, I think, on maybe a tour bus or something somewhere. And he watches on TV and there's this gospel singer. He's like, that's the music that really makes me happy or something. Do you remember them saying that? Yes, I do remember that. With Priscilla, like in the bus. Yes. And I thought thought to myself, here it comes. Here it comes. I think I even looked over at like Brian and I'm like, here we go. That was important to me because there's so much uh, documented about that part of his life. Right. Yeah, and yeah. he won. It's the only thing that he won a Grammy for. Yeah. I did not know that. I didn't How know. How great thou art. That's and crazy. And he won like three Grammys. For, and it was all for God, his gospel recordings. That's crazy. Yeah. And yeah. they didn't put that in the movie. They didn't put it in the movie. I guess they felt like it was, um, it didn't further the story that. Of his Baz life. was telling, yeah, I yeah, think, because yeah, yeah. it was through the eyes of the colonel right. and all of that That's kind of true. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Did you learn anything about Elvis that you didn't know before? Um, other than what I already mentioned. Yeah, the stuff that we talked about. Was it? I don't. I mean, I think I did, but I don't know, like specifically. I didn't know a lot about him in general. Okay. Other than his music. Okay, so. let, let's go into, we're going to backtrack a little bit for a mm-hmm. second because I want to say something about you and about me. Okay, about ourselves. Yeah, we didn't really talk no, about ourselves. No, we really didn't. It's totally okay. And for those of you who are listening, by the way, this is a really important piece of this podcast is to know that I got a little mental, I got a little ADD probably going on <laughs> or something like that. So I jump around a little bit. 
I'm going to try not to do that, but we did that in the very beginning of this. So I want to go back yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit right. and kind of say, so we, you know, YouTube is a really weird place because when YouTube happened, it was a free for all for everybody who wanted to, to be able to like do whatever they wanted to do. So that meant that it was filled with all kinds of, you know, people who wanted to sing, wanted to act, wanted mm -hmm. to whatever. And my thing was ended up being pranks. And that sort of led to like, you know, doing things for different TV shows or uh, late night talk shows and stuff like that. So yeah. I did some appearances there. And then every once in a while, you'd have a video really, really blow up and it would go totally crazy. And then the next morning you'd wake up and you'd see on Google that everybody was talking about it, you know, or whatever. There's all these news articles coming out. So that sort of led to like TV shows. And uh, now I get to produce movies, which is awesome. Hear that? Yeah. So that is, uh, <laughs> we're at this place in the middle of Tennessee out of nowhere. So it's going to be quiet most of the time. Then all of a sudden a motorcycle yeah. or some hot rod goes by yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and part of that, it's always been kind of a family business. So Madison yeah. and I have been sort of together in a lot of the stuff that we've done. And you've be, even really been a sport and been in some of my videos. Thanks. Yeah, that's true. Were you, when you would be in a video of mine, were you like excited about it or were you doing it just because I said? No, I, I was know, excited about it. Yeah. You liked it? Yeah. yeah. It was always fun. Did you ever think that you would like become like it would, it would lead to anything else? Pranks? Yeah. For me? Yeah. No. No, he just, he was just no, fun. But I, you definitely were an influence on me because I just saw that with this the other day that there, one, of, I think it was like my second YouTube video I ever put out was a birthday party for me. And I was in, I was in like fifth grade at the time. And for our birthday party, me and all my girlfriends went out and just filmed pranks on the street of Huntington. <laughs> And we just did the stupidest stuff. Do you remember that? I do remember that. Where Where is that posted? Is that posted somewhere? I took it down. I, I mean, I didn't down. delete it. I just privated it because it was embarrassing. It's I not embarrassing it. anymore. But, uh, you know, when you're like, I was in fifth grade at the time. And mm. then I think when I re-stumbled upon it, I must have been like in high school, yeah. like a freshman. And so I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. And so I privated it. But now... Yeah. I can look at it and be like, oh, like that's cute. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you so like I was into you pranks for a little. Yeah. Um, but not yeah. I never I don't think I ever like yeah. saw that. Are you at me. the age now where you can look back at stuff that you did a long time ago and not really be embarrassed by it anymore and just be like, oh. Yeah. Really? I think so. I mean most things. Some things are still embarrassing. But that's just like how it is. Like a lot of my life is on the internet. Yeah. So the Never mind. I'm not even going to say that because I don't want people to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm worried that I'm going to say the wrong thing. No, no, no. It's fine. Or you can say what whatever. If I, bring up, if I bring up something and it happens to be what you were just thinking of. It wasn't. I, it wasn't? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Something I don't know about? No. Oh. But it's just not relevant. Hmm. So It's not relevant. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so you did, um, you, did, you did your own... Uh, Actually, first, before we get into that, okay. uh, we'll, we'll let people know that basically in 2014, I think I'm getting the dates right, hopefully. In 2014, we were approached to do a reality show, which three of the people in the reality show are here with us today. Me, yes. you, and Chris, who's over there behind the scenes with his friend Micah, and they are working on... Um, you know, some of the technical stuff in this. So it was a family show. And the whole idea was, hmm, here's a guy who makes a living on the internet doing pranks. And for those of you listening that don't really understand how that's even a possibility, I don't either. <laughs> but here's how it works. Basically, you, you know, when you upload a video to YouTube, Facebook, um, you get ad revenue. So they're playing video, all those little ads and commercials that you see that all transpires to a certain amount of money. Um, so they wanted to follow the family because they knew it was a family business and they wanted to go, you know, let's follow them behind the scenes doing pranks and let's like make the pranks more elaborate and all this kind of stuff. So we did it. Ashley was with us. Mm -hmm. um, our cousin. Our cousin. And, uh, and we all just got a house 
for um, in Vegas. We moved to Vegas for a little while, and we started doing all these pranks, and it was a blast. I would say that I think for the most part, it was nothing but a good, positive experience. Would you say the same? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would say that. So um, it was fun to me because it was, uh, you know, we got to spend time together as a family and work at the same time. Mm-hmm. So we were all involved at the same time, and there was the A story and the B story, and it was your typical reality show. Yeah. Um, but ours was different because it was, it was, for the most part, I would say pretty real. Yeah, it was definitely really real. Yeah. The only thing that they got off base with, I would say, was the interviews. The interviews. I was just about to say. That was the they worst always part. give you like these one liners that are like, okay. Yeah. Say this cheesy. or say that. Yeah, yeah. Or try to pit one person against like the other right. person, you know. Mm-hmm. Um so anyway, that lasted for six episodes. We, but that's the amount of the first episode. It was we got picked up for six episodes. That was it. So we got to the finale. And it did really, really well. And these articles were coming out. It was on HLN. So nobody really knew how to find it because yeah. I don't know how many people were watching HLN. That part kind of right. sucked. Sorry, HLN. But <laughs> but but uh, I don't think I, HLN is watching this. People would ask me, like, where is this at again? You know, because they would forget HLN because they didn't yeah. watch it. And right. Greg, you know, our friend Greg yeah. Benson, who I worked with and a good friend of mine, he would always call me. He's, he'd go, now you're now you're on the home shopping network, right? <laughs> Like he never could really remember it, but yeah. also I think half heartedly he was kind of razzing me. Yeah. But so the show did really well and all these articles came out and then Relativity Media filed bankruptcy. Yes, I forgot about that. And after we got picked up for a second full second season, we were like two weeks away from starting production on the second season. And uh, HLN pulled the plug. Because our production company, Relativity, filed bankruptcy. Yep. <sighs> that sucked. Yeah. Um, and then a couple years later, maybe, something like that, the pop game. Yeah, 2017? 20, 2017. I think 2016 is when you guys filmed. And oh, then they okay. aired yeah, it. Yeah, they yeah. aired it, I think, in, in the be towards the beginning of 2017. Maybe, yeah. Talk about what that was. That was, the pop game was a reality show about five singers, and basically these five singers would go on the show with their guardian or manager, and so I went on with my mom, and it was a competition show. Timbaland was the host. If you all know who Timbaland is, uh, you probably do. He's a very famous music producer, and we just competed and would do these little, like, challenges, I guess, and he would have to vote for, like who got like first in this round and then the next. And then the goal of the whole show was to get signed to his record label. Mm. And Ian Gray was the winner of the Mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. And it, sorry, you go. What was the, what was your favorite part of the show and what was your least favorite? Um, I think my favorite part of the show was just living with all the kids. Mm. Cause I think we all like had really fun, like off camera. We would all like, go out and like hang out and I don't know it was just like none of us well I did know Ashland going into it but the rest of us didn't know each other Mm. and so it was just like we were like a big old family just living together and hanging out and we lived there for what what was like a month Mm -hmm. um least favorite part was watching it (laughs) it was watching it yeah I did not um like it (laughs) didn't like it really (laughs) No, I mean, it's definitely Mm. entertaining. Like I could see how like I have been stopped, which was also weird, like getting stopped in public after Mm -hmm. the show Mm -hmm. and being like, oh, you're from the TV show, The Pop Game. And I'm like, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) that's me. You could have just said, no, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not her. You have the wrong People stop me all the time, Mm -hmm. but. I could have. Yeah, I don't know. I just felt like it was, I hated the interviews. And a lot Mm. of them are like pieced together. And so it's like a lot of what you're seeing really didn't happen like that at all. And of course, it's reality TV shows. So they have to make it entertaining to the watcher Mm -hmm. and they have to add conflict and they have to, you know, do their thing. So I totally understand it. But Mm -hmm. it's just like it was just really interesting. I feel like sometimes that's because there's so many people involved in the show behind the scenes mm-hmm. that um, 
they want their idea they want to have an idea so they forcefully create an idea and then they implement that idea into the show because they have to earn their keep yes it's almost like sometimes it's a really stupid idea <laughs> but but they impl- they implement it because hey they fight for it because it was their idea you know what i mean yeah i experienced that in um there was a pilot that i shot for tbs do you remember this? No. <clears throat> TBS was a pretty good network. Yeah. And I was really ex- This was supposed to be kind of a Tosh.0 style show a little bit, but it was it was about, it was all pranks. Every video footage, it was all pranks. Are you talking about bloopers? No. Oh. No. This was another TV show called Prank You. Okay. And so there was a tagline at the end of the hosting gig and everything and i'd yeah. be like you know until then prank you you know and okay yeah, yeah this yeah. whole thing and then there was a script and you had to you know there were all these really awful jokes and maddie these jokes were awful <laughs> awful listen i should have brought the script with me so you could actually i bet you've never thumbed through my prank you script i still have it i don't think i have oh my gosh it, they had all these people in a room and they'd have all these writers together and you get together and you come up with all these jokes some were okay, and some were like, but then okay. they're not good. But then you have to, like, once you say something, you want to, like, fight for your idea to get heard and get in the show. Right. Well, then you create friction because you got other people going, listen, I don't know how to tell you this, but that's a dumb joke. Yeah. Anyway, it's just very awkward. It can be very uncomfortable. But that's one of the, you know, one of the parts of having a reality show. It's the yeah, way that it is. It's true. All of the shows that I've been a part of um, that involve – uh, pranks or any kind of, you know, anything where everybody's trying to come up with original ideas, what they're actually doing is they're scouring the internet for ideas. And then they, and then they go, Hey, uh, let's do this idea or let's do that idea. So anyways, it's, uh, it was overall a good experience. Would you say the pop game? Um, yes. I sense some reluctance, even <laughs> a little hesitation. Yeah, I would say overall. What was your which was your favorite show? The Pop Game? Jack Vale Offline. Well, The Pop Game we lived in a mansion in LA. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. What difference But is I that also a, We had a I pretty cool house. We did have a cool house. I just yeah. had a big pool. I don't know if it's like all my concussions, but I have a really bad memory. Like really bad memory. And oh. so I don't really I remember filming it obviously, but I don't remember details of like how I felt. Hmm. <laughs> I have Is a that really, weird. I have a or really. Is that normal? N- uh, I don't know. I, I don't know because I've always had a bad memory. Oh. Um, Are bad memories genetic? I don't. Th- <laughs> Have you always had a bad memory, <laughs> or or is it just since you've had a concussion? Uh, well, I don't know because I've I only know about two, and I don't know when I got the other one. Oh, so I might have been really young when I got the first one. Okay, why did you have so many concussions, sweetheart? Just kidding. Is it four? Because oh, I well I passed out that one time. Yeah. At, and hit my head. Right. And then the other time I got two because Mia was driving that, my friend Mia was driving this like glorified golf cart and veered off the road because oh, yeah. it was so late. And right. I was in the backseat, bonked my head on both sides of the poles, <laughs> bonk, bonk, fell yeah. into the river, two concussions. I did not like hearing about that story. <laughs> we, we were really worried about you guys. Yeah, it was Oh hilarious. my goodness. It was not hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But okay. anyways, okay. yeah. So, so bad memory. But yeah. Um, they were also two completely different shows, two completely different experiences. And I was yeah. um, in different stages of life as well, mm-hmm. age-wise. Did the pop game help you in any way in your career? Because you're, you're, we should talk about that. You're a singer. Yes. Songwriter. Singer, songwriter. Right. Singer, yeah. songwriter. How would you, you would call yourself a singer, songwriter, in what genre? Um, well, if you look me up, it says country, but I'm working on an EP that's actually indie pop. 
So I'm saying this like I'm speaking to everyone and not you. Um, Do it. (laughs) Do it. That's good. Um, Yeah, it's indie pop. Mm -hmm. You know that. Mm -hmm. Um, And but yeah, if you look up Madison, it'll be like Madison Rose sings like country hit girlfriend or whatever, which Mm -hmm. um, was written by amazing writers. Um, but country isn't my genre anymore. And so I'm kind of like stepping back from that and doing what I really love to do. You should do an Elvis song. <laughs> you should do an Elvis song. I was going to say that you should do can't help falling in love. Cause I think you'd sound beautiful doing that. Casey Musgraves. Just Casey Musgraves just, and, uh, yeah. Haley Reinhardt has a really famous version of that song as well. She does. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you should find something that's maybe like trouble. a little, I can do trouble. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh my god! I don't know if I've I can never sing heard a girl do trouble. Song. You'd probably kill it. Honestly, I'm kind of interested now to learn it. Oh my gosh! That could be fun, dude. That would be, <laughs> dude. That would be really, really fun. How great! I don't think I've ever heard a girl try to do that song. I wonder. Yeah. If I if, look a, it up. if if a woman did that song, it would be like you would imagine like a legend, you know, like Joan Jett. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Somebody with that, you know? Yeah. But I've never True. heard it. Me either. Interesting. Got to yeah. do it. <laughs> Got to do it. Okay, so that's a little bit that's a little bit about you. Yes. A um, little bit about me. Um, I just, you know, there's, there's, I want this show to be more kind of fun and uh, topical, mm-hmm. but in kind of a lighthearted sense. Yeah, definitely. So that's why I thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about, um, obviously, some history and some some background and stuff like that, but also get into the um, you know the the Elvis the Elvis stuff because of where we get to shoot Film. this and and record this from and stuff. So, yeah. um, are you? Would you call yourself an Elvis fan? Before the movie? Um, I think so. I mean, I always loved his stuff and I okay. like, would listen to it, but I don't know. I don't know if I would say like, oh yeah, I'm an Elvis fan. Mm-hmm. Good looking guy by today's standards? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> also. <laughs> yeah. You started this conversation saying a little bit about me, and then you started talking more about me. No, no, no. I, I said uh, what I meant by that was we uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about you uh-huh. and a little bit about me, and I already did that. I feel like I did that, right? Wait, but didn't you just... Okay. Didn't I just what? I thought you just said... Anyway, so that's a little about you. A little bit about me is... You took it differently, Maddie. You took oh. it like I was saying. A little bit about me and then changed the subject. Uh, yes. What I was saying was a little bit about me, period. Oh, okay. Like a little bit about you, a little bit about me. Okay. <laughs> well, you should have so, said it like that. That's that's how, that's right. how I meant it. Okay. We don't want to talk too much about me. Okay. Um, um, well, yes. I think I would say that I am an Elvis fan, but I'm not like crazy. Mm-hmm. I just thought the movie was good. I think he's talented, obviously. Was it darker than you th- thought it would be? No, because I knew a little bit. Like, I knew how he died, and obviously, like, a lot of touring musicians go through the same things, and so I think I was expecting it. Who were you? How many people did you see it with? I saw it with three. What Emily, did they all Mia, think? Victoria. They all thought it was amazing. Really? Mm-hmm. We all left with, like, the same consensus. Was it interesting at all to you that you you leave kind of like it thinking, wow, this was an awesome story, but were you, were you kind of surprised? Did you leave kind of like heavy hearted, right? Um, I guess so. Wow, not as much as I did apparently. Oh. I walked out of the theater depressed. <laughs> That's I was, horrible. I was so. <laughs> I was so upset. Really? But yeah, he, I was so he died upset. Years ago. Well, I, no, just, not like, not like I just mourning? found out for the first time he died. <laughs> I knew he died. I don't mean that. I, I, no, I was. Yeah, I, I was so sad that he got so taken advantage of. Oh, and, you know, oh yeah, yeah. I had no stuff. idea about his manager or anything like that. Oh, really? No, I didn't. And taking fifty percent, and then seeing how like he went off on him mm-hmm. when he found out that he didn't have a passport and that's why he couldn't like that was also sad seeing how badly he wanted to 
perform overseas overseas yeah. and not being able to do that. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I definitely learned a lot from it, but remember you got to do your own research. Yeah. You got to like after, especially after you watch something like that, you know, you got to like look up what really happened. There's That's always, true. The, there's always the YouTube videos that come out after that are like, 10 things that oh. didn't actually happen in the Elvis movie, you know, right. or whatever. Yeah, because so, they do, they have to amp it up and like add things. Yeah, I can tell you a couple of those things. Okay. At the end of the movie, he calls out the colonel on stage. Yes. Right? Yeah. Didn't happen. Oh. Didn't happen. Did not happen. I just Does, ruined it for somebody listening. But it didn't happen. Did not happen that way. Did he... Did he like call him out at all? Like, did he actually know? No, he didn't no, find out. No, he. It would have been. It would have been unlike his character to even do that. Well, on all those pills. <laughs> That's, <laughs> I guess that could have altered his state a little bit, but he he got mad at him at one point, and he did fire him, and it did. It, it is true that they received a bill for like. Uh, somewhere in the mid between what was like, it like eight million dollars yeah it was like eight million dollar bill and then he's like well i guess we have no choice but to hire him back that did happen oh. uh nobody really knows if it was eight million dollars that was like a creative oh. license they took yeah. but um it was yeah he did fire him but it didn't happen on stage like that and it okay. didn't happen it happened in his private quarters later and gotcha. you know and all this kind but of he stuff. did find out that he didn't have a passport right and that's how he like no where are you getting this information? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he fa Elvis found out that, um, or excuse me, Elvis never found out that he did not have a passport. Then why did he fire him? Did he find out like because he just screwed him over? Of? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that it, deal with yeah. the hotel and then, guy, and then after after um, is either after Elvis died? I think it was after Elvis died. All the information became like available about the oh. colonel. And so then, like, it became public information. Gotcha. And then people could find out. But sadly, lots of that stuff he never knew. Elvis never knew. Wow. What That's would... honestly kind of better. Well, yeah. maybe it's not. But selfishly, it's kind of better. Because it's like you're watching the movie and you're like, oh. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I, I do know what you like mean. Like, having be... him be crushed to find out the truth. Mm -hmm. So, like, years later yeah throughout his career but i don't know that was i take that back it it would have been better that he knew mm -hmm. i'm just being i don't know yeah <laughs> yeah did you i know exactly what you're talking about by the way because i'm producing a film right now as you know about another singer yes. who is a legendary singer in a different genre uh, i'm not even gonna say who it is right now because okay. that's not what this episode is about but mm -hmm. um uh, we all feel the same way. His family, me, a bunch of people that knew him are like, man, if only I'm really glad that this guy never knew how much he was taken advantage of. And he did mm -hmm. find out on some of it, but a lot of stuff he never knew. And it, it's just, it's awful. I mean, he died, you know, little did he know that there were people who were like looking for handouts and just taking advantage of it. Are you talking about Elvis or the, the I'm talking about, well, I'm talking about, about both actually, but oh, I'm okay. saying I can relate to it because it's really, really awful. You just kind of feel like you know how sad this is because I was yeah. directly connected to this other person. So it's awful to think about that you kind of stuff. You just want to protect you know? them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 42. That's young. That is very young. I am going to be 49 years old this year. How come I didn't know that? I was going to say 45. <laughs> you were going to say 45? I was going to say you're turning 46 or 47. I guess that's close enough. I mean, you were going to say 45 and I'm saying 49. You, you're, you're off. Yeah, that's true. That's you're four years. It's OK. I just don't think about it. Kids. Yeah, that's totally OK. <laughs> Plus, I mean, look at this. When you're this, <laughs> you know, you would never say 49. No, you're not. You're lying to me. <laughs> you're like 25. Are you kidding me? Right. Am I right? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I, I look like I look like I'm 25. 26, maybe. Yeah. Right? Give or take. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, so one of the things that I want to do as well for those of you who are listening is uh, or watching is uh, we want to have guests. So we have some really, really exciting guests 
who are lined up. And guess what? We are in Nashville. Yes, we are. We are right on the outskirts of Nashville. So there are a lot of ta- there's a lot of talent, a lot of people. People have moved to Nashville in droves over the last couple of years. Oh yeah, crazy yeah. amount of people. It's part of why our home value has <laughs> increased so much because it is a crazy place where we live. And the streets are getting busier and busier. I like it though. You do? I like not the streets being busy, but I like <laughs> I like Nashville. Oh yeah, I love Nashville. Do you like it? Do you like it where we're filming here in Bonacqua, Tennessee? I like this building. <laughs> the bu- the building is cool. Yeah. yeah. And Johnny Johnny Cash's farm just is yes, right that up the is road. Cool. Right? That's mm-hmm. pretty pretty fun. That is. So is there an Elvis? Do you see there being an Elvis part two? Maybe uh, coming no. out. Is there supposed to be? They're they're filming Elvis Elvis. Oh, two. you mean like the with all the scenes that they had to take out? No, no, no. They're doing Elvis part two. What are you talking about? Like they have to have like they have to have the funeral. The whole movie is just yeah. The whole movie is just based on the funeral. You're lying. (laughs) (laughs) Terrible idea. (laughs) I don't know who's gonna see that movie. You think Elvis one was good? (laughs) You got to see this one. It's gonna be incredible. (laughs) No, I think they did a good job telling the story. So I'm 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 pretty happy with it. I will say, coming to this particular building is weird walking back and then maybe in a future episode we can actually show what it looks like but i am if you're listening to me right now and you have a chance to go see the storytellers museum in bonacqua tennessee come see it it is an incredible place besides this uh set here that's awesome look at all this um there is so many actual personal belongings of Johnny Cash and Elvis and stuff like that. Where did my motorcycle go? Elvis's motorcycle used to be here. Oh, really? I just realized it's not here today. I don't remember ever seeing that. Um, cool. So back in this other room, can you imagine how much you must love music history to dismantle an entire house and then reattach it to another place and yeah. like say here it is and mm-hmm. stuff like that? And then to keep the, uh, you know, the razor blades... <laughs> Elvis's razor blades locked up in a safe. Yeah. It's a little you know, they didn't know. They saw some of his bathroom stuff that he used, including his toilet is here. Elvis's toilet is at this museum. It's pretty cool. The one he died on? Yeah. I've used it many times. No. Oh. Not the one that he... <laughs> not that one. That was, didn't he? That, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But that was more like... That one's probably gold-plated or something. I don't know. <laughs> but there, there is one here... That was at the colonel's house. Gotcha. So when Elvis was in town in Madison, he would stay at the colonel's house, and he'd have to go in through a back door so nobody could see him okay, and all this yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. But then he had his own facilities, his bathroom, his toilet, and all that kind of stuff. And then he would shave in this mirror. Well, they took all that stuff down, and when they dismantled the wall, they found all these razor blades in the wall. There was a slot back there, and you just drop the blades right, back there, yes, and they would yes, go yes. in. And so later, you know... Yeah, so, I mean, at that point, it's like, might as well keep them. What? The blades? The, yeah. If they're, like, untouched in the mirror. Yeah. You know? Madison. What? They're keeping the... They're Elvis Presley's <laughs> razor blades. You would have to be... You'd have to be psychotic not to want to keep Elvis Presley's razor blades. I would blades. say quite the opposite. You must be psychotic to keep them. <laughs> Chris is, Chris, is, Chris is back there laughing. You, you, how could you say that? Do you understand that these razor blades were, they touched his face like this? That's like the equivalent to not washing your hand ever once you've shaken his hand. I wouldn't. You would. Well, I would have to eventually, but I would exactly. try to, I would try to like keep it. I'd put one of those like those dog <laughs> head cones around my hand so that it could, I could like preserve it as long as possible. It's Elvis. It is. There's a there's a back, um, you know, scratcher back there that he used in the shower. You know those things with the <laughs> like the loofah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. They got that back there. He still has some of his dead skin. Oh, on. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand how you why you wouldn't want that. I was just I was gonna give I was gonna present so one weird. to you here so that you could either. have it, but I'm not going to now. Thanks. <laughs> 
<laughs> what would be a, something cool to own? What about a like a maybe like piece of like a piece of his clothing? That would be really cool. Yeah, but you realize Elvis's razor blade has his <laughs> DNA on it. You realize that? You sound creepy. I sound creepy. <laughs> I wouldn't say it if it were anybody else. It's Elvis. That's all. You don't want Johnny Cash's razor blades? I would love that. <laughs> That would be incredible. That would be. I would probably use that blade. Ew. Gross. Well, I don't understand what's gross about using Johnny and Elvis's razor blades. Yeah. But okay, whatever. That's I'll fine. take your word for it. Okay. Um. So, um, uh, who would be your? I want to close with this. Okay. Who would be your ideal guest and of the for this show? And you could pick anyone you could pick alive. anyone it could be one person or more and it could oh no not dead or alive you can't have dead people on the show I thought you were speaking the, I, the about, idea like, is who do you want to see on the show so okay I can like reach actually out, see on so the show? i can get who you want because i've already reached oh, out to a lot so, of people but the sky is not the limit sky is not the li no sky is the limit but not <laughs> dead people okay i'm just saying you but can i'm pick just trying to know like how broad of the spectrum is where anybody I you want Human. Okay. Anybody you want. Hum it, yes, human. Let me think. It would be a human <laughs> guess. I didn't know. Maybe like an animal guess. Um, you really thought? <laughs> you know what? Some animals are so famous. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. People do stupid things. Yeah. That would be like, I don't know. I've seen. Okay. Anyways. Who would it be? Um, uh, this is a lot of pressure to, to think about. Yeah, on the spur of the moment. I feel like, hmm, who would be fun to talk to? Um, do you, okay, do you want to say who you would like to see while I think about this? You could think about it while I say who I would like to see, but I do want to, I want to remind you that a moment ago, before we started, I said the names of a couple of people who were going to be guests. Yes. And your comment to that was, oh, are we going to get any young people? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. So I'm giving you an it's opportunity. Like you must have thought somebody. <laughs> no, I really didn't think of anybody okay. like, at the time. I was just saying. Young people. people yeah. would be fine. Austin Butler um, would be a great person Austin, to have on the show. There you go. Austin, Austin Butler. Oh, okay. That's my answer. <laughs> All right. Austin Butler. You have one answer, yeah. and it's the answer that I gave. <laughs> I, didn't think about it. I, I know i know um, okay would you rather have austin butler if, if you had to pick somebody from elvis let's say okay. which we're gonna get somebody i'm just gonna put that out there okay? <laughs> okay uh would you rather have austin or tom hanks uh um austin austin yeah wow but I don't know. Tom Hanks is Legend. pretty legendary. Yeah, he is. That's true. Yeah. And guess who owns ForrestGump.com? <laughs> this guy. This guy. <laughs> That's right. A little known <laughs> fact about Jack Vale. <laughs> I saw. Would you watch Elvis again in the theater if somebody wanted you to go? Yeah, if if I went with someone who hadn't seen it yet, yes, I would. Totally know what you mean. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm the same way. Unless yeah. I love a movie so much that right. it doesn't matter, I would go see it again. Yeah. So, did you know that I saw Forrest Gump in the theater more than once? Uh uh. More than twice. <laughs> you didn't know that? No. Guess how many times I saw it in the theater. Okay. Well. Just take a guess. Just guess. Four. In the theater I feel while like it four was. In the Feel like four is a good number. Times going to the movie theater is mm -hmm. good enough. How about nine? <laughs> is nine good? Because <laughs> that's the answer. That's how much. Why? At the time, I loved Forrest Gump because that movie had everything in it, and it left you feeling good, oh, even though okay. Jenny dies at the end. Mm -hmm. It still. He's got the kid. The kid's going off to school. The feather comes down. Mm -hmm. He's you know. It's just a beautiful. <laughs> That's absurd. It, well, it is. It's a lot. And and embarrassingly, a couple of those times, I was by myself. <laughs> That's 
that's fine. Uh, Going to okay. the movies by yourself, that's fine. Good. Well, some people frown on that. <laughs> <laughs> some people think it's somewhat pathetic. Well, some people need to love themselves. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And with that, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. It's a good way to close it out. Are we at an hour? Okay. So thank you so much for listening to the Jack Vale Show with Madison, my daughter. And uh, this is going to be so much fun. I can't wait to uh, to bring on guests and keep talking about other topics um, and stuff like that. And so thank you. Until next time, we will see you in the, uh, the next episode. See ya. See you later. I guess um, I would start. Hey, Brian. Oh, they are? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, the jukebox. Oh, you got it repaired. Oh, that's great. I can't wait to... Yeah, sure. It's okay. Take your time. That'll be the outro. <clears throat> huh? I said that'll be the outro. Yeah. See you guys. See ya. Hey, see you, Brian.